I sleep. So welcome to another Exploring Consciousness with the Earth Nouveau Hub. And today we're going to talk about anything that isn't matter, does it matter? And that's just the beginning of our question. And it's also a con continuation, obviously, what we always do in this show, we always look, we, we move from the seen into the unseen and work with matter and antimatter and, and uh, you know, spirit or matter and blah, 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 the whole thing. What we've just started before we got on now is uh, I just asked a question because it's sort of, uh, you know, falls into this a little bit as well, or maybe it will guide us into the, the conversation. I was saying, so how does one know when they have achieved the goal? From a very individual sort of perspective. And the example that we used was um, signing up on a course, doing a course. How, how does one know, how do you know that you have achieved your goal because it is a sort of a goal it's an intention you know to do that course and uh, we were just saying some of us do it in whilst they're doing it in between and all of that and some of us uh, like uh, um, mary was saying as well uh, as soon as they sign up on a course they know they've achieved it So Mary, if you just carry on saying what you were saying about this now. Yes, I, I was just giving an example that um, sometimes when I sign up for a course, I can actually forget that I've done it, that I've signed up. And there is a feeling of completion by just simply signing up. Now, there are different courses. I suppose I'm thinking of the Living the Mystical Life daily course and, and in signing up for that. That was a huge course that involved a lot of commitment and a lot of turning up. You know, it wasn't just signing up. You had to keep turning up all the time for yourself and the group and the content and all of that. So how do I know that I achieve my goal in that? And it would be the same way as any other course. Did I enjoy it? And did I learn something new out of it? And I keep the goals simple, actually. They're simple enough goals. And I always feel a sense of completion. And I always feel I get something out of absolutely everything I do in course, like in terms of courses and signing up for new learning and all of that. And if, if you want me to say about the autumn and the sense of harvesting, uh, yeah, that in the autumn, when I come into the autumn in September, I always get a sense that I want to sign up for a lot of new courses and a lot of new things as I'm approaching the winter. And sometimes I just look at the autumn as a time of collecting, collecting the fruits of the harvest. And I often wonder, you know, do I give myself enough time to collect my own fruits of my own harvest? And probably not. I probably run a bit from doing that and I probably just sign up for something new again. And, you know, sometimes the harvest and the darkness of it and all of that forces me actually into a place of looking at what maybe are the fruits that I have this autumn for myself from the year gone by. And it's not a conscious thing. This is something that's totally unconscious. I might, I might even reflect on it as I'm walking and crushing through the leaves as I'm going through the woods, but I'm not really that conscious that I'm doing it. But yet I, I'm conscious that there's a process to it and that there is, you know, a, there is an ending to the growth period. And I have a feeling inside of me that I want to keep that going as well as looking maybe at the leaves and the fruits and whatever. But there is a sense of I'm not letting things die, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, there is something that in me that's a bit like that. Well, th this is there's such a huge concept. If you look at the energy behind what, what Mary just mm. said, it's such a huge concept, you know, because, and I, I can totally uh, relate to that because I'm one of those people, you know, as soon as I sign up on a course, I'm done with it, basically. Doesn't mean that I don't finish it, I'll always complete it, but the certificate itself doesn't really, you know, do anything to me. Now, what I do particularly there, I cut myself short from a celebration perspective. 
And then what you just said, and you even mentioned the words, you said die. I don't allow to have things dying. And this is exactly what this society is very, uh, um, what's the word? What we're not doing in this society, we're not celebrating death. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So huge. We're not celebrating the death of obviously our bodies, but apart from that, you know, it's almost like we got to look at this. Do you, we got to celebrate the death of a project so that we can then allow it. And this goes very much like, because it's an ongoing thing then almost. Do we ever cut off from it? Yes, I think we could. But isn't that mm. celebration of death sound, it's, it's the wrong word, you know, because it's a completion. But then again, it's not very different in terms of um energy the word puts yeah. us off death because that is obviously something we need to look at to, to be able to start celebrating death to take out the fear of it and everything but it's almost like it's the same with any project yeah and and the other thing that comes up for me here and this is very much you know again to what actually that works for anything you know that isn't matter does it matter because you know i have an example i was just saying to a friend the other day um let's go and do hadrian's wall in scotland right and it was a couple of weeks ago and uh and then we did a trial walk you know see how many kilometers we could get in and see you know how we could stagger the days or something and by the time we did that one practice walk, none of us did anything anymore. We never did the Hadrian's, we can still do it, but the energy is completely gone. I haven't even spoken to her because I know she has exactly the same <laughs> sense. Because what we did is we already did it in the unseen. Yes. And this is what we have to be very aware with that shortcutting ourselves and not allowing the fruits literally to manifest in our hands in the basket. Yeah. yeah. Because we are so fast. Yeah. We can seem to complete something there that it never materializes in this realm, in this reality. And I'm perfectly happy with this because I know this now. I mean, this has been an exploration over years. You know, there was a time where I totally and utterly judged myself into the ground that I'll never get anything done until I realized that, oh, I did it already. I'm just so fucking fast, right? And I'm not saying it's a good thing because, you know, we forget that at times. And then there comes this, what, what we just called impatience, where, you know, is it really impatience or is it just an acknowledgement of how much capacity that we have to create? Mm, yes, I but know. Then, and I was just thinking that. But also it's the reminder that we're not supposed to be doing that. We're supposed to be yeah. doing that now, right? Yeah. We're supposed to yeah. be going there because we're shortcutting yeah. our experience in that. Because and as you're talking, you know, Martina, I'm sorry now, uh, no, am I cutting no. across you? As you're talking, I'm also getting an image now of myself. And I did mention walking through the woods and, crush, you know, walking through the crushing leaves and being aware of the dying off of nature and things dying. But while that's happening, and this might be the rush that comes on me in the autumn to start to plant new seeds because the autumn is a time for planting. It's a time where we put the bulbs in the ground that will come up in the spring. So there is something, I suppose, then very active in me in the autumn where I'm aware of the, the completion, the completion of the season, the completion of, of nature, the completion of a lot of things around me. But I'm also aware that I want to plant new things, you know, and that's the thing about starting new new courses and starting some new projects and something new. And and that comes up in the spring. Now, I'm probably a little bit in reverse here to most people, because in the spring, I can go into that place that people go into in the autumn. I can go into a place of kind of evaluation. Whereas I don't do that that much in the autumn. I get very caught up in the flowers and the colors and 
and doing all the new things. And then in the spring, when everything starts to come up, it's almost like, oh, I just take a pause. You know, everything has arrived now, so I can just take a little pause. <laughs> and that's a little bit in reverse to the seasons because it's the pause in the autumn that causes the things to drop you know, off, off the trees and, and all of that. It's like the pause in the, in the breath, uh, in the planet, you know, that last little bit of the breathing out and it sheds. But I have to say, I quite like that. I, I, you yeah. know, does it really matter when you do take the pause? No, it doesn't, no. Because no, I'm it doesn't. I can perceive the energy of celebration, of taking a step back, of the pause, of the planting, of the, you know, taking stock and everything. It's all there. It's yes, it there. is, yeah. And it doesn't matter when you do it. No, I think your birth might have something to do with it, too. You know, you're you know, they say if you're born like I am at the end of August, well, then the autumn would probably be my spring. But I'm not so sure about all, about all of that. But it's just a theory. No, I really like that. I really like that. And it's more important to look at that, you know, when you actually get triggered. So I, yeah. because I'm not a green finger person, so it's, you're absolutely right. It is in September when you plant stuff, isn't it? Mm. Mm. So thanks, not everything, I suppose, because I, not everything, but the flowers for the spring and the certain cool. things you plant for the spring that you do it in September, October. Uh, well, that that helps me now. Mm. That, I can appreciate that now. That really helps me. Hmm. Mm. Maybe I should plant some something to bring it into my experience. You see, this is the thing, you know, um, I have to keep looking at this. Anything that isn't matter, does it matter? So I, my birthday is in April and I, the spring is always very energizing for me. That's sort of when I like to start new things. But as, as I was listening to you talk about, okay, the course and when is it, when is it completed there is something about doing it and there is something about signing up and making that commitment but i think that the course is almost just like the um the appetizer right it's like the meal and the dessert comes from the actualization of putting into practice what you learned so maybe maybe after that is when the celebration happens. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like, okay, how, how, what did I learn? How am I putting this into practice in my life? And how is that uh, creating momentum for whatever is next? Okay. Fantastic. Anyone else who wants to, there's a, quite a few energies going on here. So just pick and choose anything that works for you there. If you want to, you know, chip in with anything. My birthday's in March. So I get a sense of new, new life also in the spring, but then I also feel it in the summer and the fall and the winter like I get excited about every season every season kind of brings like a new something new to me so just like a breath to like okay what am I going to do next and on the course I have had that feeling of accomplishment as soon as I made the conscious decision to sign up for it and sometimes for me it's not even about the course material it's about who I meet in the class mm -hmm. and what I carry forward from there so it's not always just about like the material but it's about who you connect with there and what changes that makes for you down the road. That, that's that's a, a common thing. Do you guys have that as well with, with the course? It's it's often, you know, it's not the material itself. It, the, the material itself, the curriculum it draws you into it, but then it's actually what I, as you say, uh, Jane, it, it's the interaction between the people how it gets facilitated and how the material facilitates the people and myself, you know, that's where I usually learn the most, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Well, we went straight into this because that, that popped in. Um, so 
How is everyone doing? <sighs> Feels a little bit crazy this last week. You know, from my perspective, it's almost like a template has has deconstructed and mm -hmm. things are just sort of spinning free, freely, free for all, <laughs> you know, bringing us back to really our own, I think, center, you know, where we have that that momentum and power within ourselves. Right. It's like the world, the world's going crazy around us, but <laughs> we can stand in our own center, you know, in the eye of the hurricane, then, then there's, you know, comfort and solace and, and purpose in that, I think. I feel that spinning energy, you know, I noticed it when I was, um, my sister-in-law has a really nice pool and I went swimming on Saturday and it was, it was wild. You know, the wind was blowing and the leaves were circling all around and the water was a little bit cloudy and it just really felt like fall in the air, right? Like something big had shifted and something big had changed. You think it was a full moon? Uh, no, I think it was um, Queen Elizabeth's death. Really, it looked like she was holding an energetic template, you know, for the last 70 years, really, maybe longer. And that that energy that is that was in place. You know, AB talks about all the contracts, right, that the royal family holds, but it seems like it's almost like she was like the last the last bastion of of or anchor that was holding holding down that template yeah and it seems like all of a sudden just shattered deconstructed and so now everything that was holding a lot of those old structural energies in place is just sort of like flying free right i mean think about a flag untethered from its flagpole just sort of like flaps away in in the wind right and so so there's i don't know it feels like so much of that old structure of domination and control was sort of held in that template and from my perspective it's just sort of like like spinning apart now lots of pieces just sort of like flying in all different directions and there doesn't really have a the kind of anchor that it did i mean it's still anchored in many different ways but I think that that she was a huge anchor point for that energy. Is go ahead. No, no, you go. Like I had a come undone the night before last, and that's really unusual for me to like not be in a in a settled state and. I hadn't really thought about it having anything to do with with her passing, but it was like everything that I knew in terms of like how my life is structured was just like it just collapsed for a minute. And I had to think about like what it looked like on the other side of that. And I just had to process like a lot of that raw emotion, which I'm just usually a very stable person. So that was really uncomfortable for me. But like yesterday that cleared out and it was a lot lighter yesterday than it's been probably in weeks. And uh, I can see what you, I can see exactly what you're talking about there with just like letting it fly away with the wind. It's a good analogy. Yeah, I can see that too. Sorry. No, go ahead. Say no, no, I finish, finish, it. Jennifer. Oh, yeah. I was going to, um, it's not usually for me to, to blame it on the full moon, but I, I did. I <laughs> had to blame it on something. Cynthia. Yeah, I was going to say it just, I'm just processing. But what just is occurring to me as we're talking, so this necklace is Queen Elizabeth. 
And I've never had an attachment to her. And then at her passing, I didn't have any emotional, you know, that was just me. But I found this in a secondhand store, probably on Hate Street in San Francisco, 11 years ago. And yesterday, I just literally wore it. You know, I hadn't really ever worn it. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, but then as we're all talking, I'm thinking, well, um, we're, we're moving out of that kind of very few, hopefully in the new world, that the, where the very few people are holding control. I was just thinking about the evolution of each of us being our sovereign queens, right? Is that ding, 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 ding. Oh, that's right. We have worked really hard. Things are breaking. Things are blowing away, you know, and we're stepping into our sovereignty as our own queens. And I just, it just, boom, just kind of came to me. So I thought that was interesting. You know, the, the new world, I mean, ideally, you know, that's kind of what I see. Um, so that's what I wanted to share. So let's flip the coin on this. Because we've been saying, the queen died and this is what happens happened to us and so we're linking it to her death right in a big maybe awful man whatever yeah um now let's flip the coin and say what happened in the unseen in the intangible intangible realm that participated if that is a word the queen to move on on that particular day that actually facilitated us into having our interesting, because I've had a wobble too. And uh, yes, I also linked it to the Queenie and I linked it to me watching, you know, Game, Game of Thrones and everything. Because I, I was really facilitated uh, to clear very ancient allegiances and alliances and fealties and communities, you know, from all those mystery schools that I had been part of. And there was, there was a sequence of events that got me into that. And as, as Jen says, I, I don't normally wobble around, you know, it is very, and it was almost like I couldn't get to sleep. I was like, whoa, what is this? What, what do I call this anxiety? What, what, what is going on here? Um, until I figured out, and I, I used, uh, you know, Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth and, and Game of Thrones and everything because it, it just kept on coming at me, all these allegiances and la, la, la. And I thought, oh, shit, yeah, that. And then I started clearing that. And very much like what you're saying, Cynthia, you know, the sovereignty bit, right, coming out, you know, clearing more of that. You know, in my chart that I had done, it was it was stipulated that, you know, being a Cancerian, uh, they say, you know, it's all this family over uh, attachment to family and stuff like that. And that wasn't really true for me because I don't necessarily have that at all. But then when I looked at the family unit from a different perspective, from that, you know, uh, working with all my with 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 all these mystical schools in in those in those big uh, you know unities communions and you know and everything the camaraderie that was interesting so yes so what did happen in the unseen that so so and 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 then again you know this this is exactly the the, the question you know we always looking into matter, <laughs> into the tangible realm. What happened here? And then, you know, why did that happen here? What happened in the unseen? Because let's face it, I mean, the tangible, the, the manifested realm here is a fraction, is a tiny, tiny speck of 
the whole life force, that intangible life force that is a foundation of our little, you know, pool that we're playing in. And that doesn't mean we're not important. No, 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 no. It's not about, you know, size counts. No, 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 <laughs> as we know, it's not that. It's really just making that connection, the pattern recognition. And moreover, it's not necessarily even say, oh, now I get it, why and what happened. And, you know, and now we're gonna, you know, go into all these points of views that we don't know yet and we can't read the Akashic records. And no, no, it's not about that. It's really a just saying, oh, that there, there is a bigger picture in everything. And whatever happens here matters in the other realm and whatever happens there matters in our realm. And I'm really snapping out of this uh, sort of idea that um, we, it, only, it only has meaning when we can see it. So good morning, everybody. If I may say a word or two. So when I heard the news uh, that day, um, it didn't take me by surprise or anything. I wasn't shocked um, or anything like that. But I got it got me to started thinking about, um, from my understanding, is that she holds the contracts for everybody that's on the planet. And um, immediately I got to thinking about, well, how does that affect us now? you know, um, in the unseen realm, um, because if she's no longer the contract holder for all of us, then in a sense, we are free. Um, or at least in this span of time when uh, the king is not crowned yet, and they didn't go through the ritual to crown him and so on. So there's a, a, a space here um, from the moment she passed on to the time where he will be crowned king, you know. Um, and it's a good time now for many people probably who understand to really work even harder to um, do contract revocation um, that might help us to create a greater separation from that system because they've been in power for over a thousand years. And that's an awfully long time <clears throat> for us who only live, you know, less than a hundred years. Um, and then I was thinking about how are they related to the 15 multi-dimensional beings? Are they part of those beings? is one of the beings, the family, you know, that, you know, is, is ruling in that part of the country. I mean, the world and all the territories they, they cover. Um, so all those things that uh, was passing through my thoughts, you know, and how um, her passing on perhaps uh, freed um, Diana from, um, being held, captured, where she is as well, and how she's probably finding some freedom from that too. So these are the few different things that was passing through my mind as I was, you know, watching the proceedings happen and so on. So I wanted to share that though. Thanks very much. I mean, that's very, very good questions very good connection to look at that and then of course you know um it goes far beyond as, as lana says it's like uh 996 years or something since 1056 or whatever the first monarchy you know so where we have we been part of it of course of course we've been part of it and have some of our shards been released through that releasing of the contracts? So we mustn't get hung up about this lifetime now. You might not have even seen it or, you know, I've never seen her, but 
all these other lifetimes and that very much explains you know certain things certainly for me the the filthy community uh, um, clearing that I had to go that I had to do and it was obviously facilitated through some completely different it was not related to her death or anything but it was very much part of it so absolutely Lana there's a, a lot lots of good uh, that's the level of uh, contemplation. And um, what helps, I think, Lana, you posted it, somebody, I don't know who posted it, was it uh, Dale, I think, posted it in, in uh, Earth and Vote. There was a show um, AB did, a summary of shows he did with, uh, he did. And, uh, well, you know, he talks about, the contracts I haven't I haven't I must actually uh, listen to it again but it's good to listen to that kind of stuff and just pick what works for you and look at it and say oh, okay hang on a second that's right and how does that actually impact my life how does that impact my <coughs> life you know well right. um <clears throat> there is sorry a, I was coughing um, no. there is a I think there is a contract revocation uh, that Andrew uh, had put out there about um, family crest. Um, and it's probably a good time for us to um, really buckle down on that particular revocation to break contracts with all the family crests. And that would probably be one of them. Absolutely. Where's that, Lana? Has he sent that out recently? No, it's an old one. It's an old yeah, one. it's an old one, Martina. Yeah, I, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I will definitely do one. <laughs> I'll, I, I'll look it up and um, see if I could post it in the files. Thanks. Thanks. I thought, I thought for the banking system that mm -hmm. there is, there is um, some revocation words around like it's the family, probably that family one. crests and then also the, the banking families. Yeah, it's probably the same one. And I don't know if there's a second one regarding family crest. He may have done one with someone who did a call in. Yeah, um, I vaguely remember that too. Yeah, that was attached to some uh, family crest at some point in time. But he did so many revocations that it's hard to like really mm -hmm. go back and find stuff, especially when it's been 10 years, of, you know since he's been doing this <laughs> hundreds of hours hundreds of hours yeah. of, of content <laughs> yeah prolific very prolific. and it's impossible to make notes of all the shows some shows i do make you know notes of some of them i'm just skip over and <laughs> you know can i just say before before we move on from that just something lana that you said there when you were speaking about the queen and how from now we we'll say until Charles is, is fully throned, that there is this space where maybe the contracts are not held. I'm sure they're held somehow in a system somewhere, but I'm not going to worry about that. But it's, it's the space. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Because I hadn't thought of that, but it, it reminded me of what I had said earlier about the pause in the breath in the autumn. And I did wonder when she died about the timing of the death, that it was kind of, you know, well, if, if August, September, October is autumn, it's mid-autumn, but it feels more like coming into the autumn. And about that pause in the breath and the shedding and, and all of that that happens. And it's just the correlation between that in nature and this happening in the system that we're in. And the space that it's providing for us in that pause and what we will do with it. And I, I didn't spend an awful lot of time thinking about the Queen's death. I did sit down one night and watched her whole life from being a little girl all the way, the way through. Um, but I, I found myself actually a little bit torn between, yes, I know everything that we say about the freedom and all of that, and that they had the contracts and, and they had a job to do, but they were really the puppets on the string. They weren't the ones, you know, that was making the rules. They were just pulling the, the strings or the strings were being pulled on them to implement them. And I thought, 
the way people talked, you know, they said, oh, she was great. She was wonderful. She was such a good servant. She gave so much. And I used to find myself thinking, well, what did she give? I wonder what was it? You know, and she used to say, you know, all my life, long or short, I would serve you. And I thought, is that that's very interesting that she's saying that, because somehow when you invert that, you could say all my life, long or short, I will control you. You know, because she was working for that system of domination and control. And I thought if you invert a lot of the statements that they make, you might find the actual real truth of what the job was and what the role was. But that doesn't take from the fact that she did complete a very good role and her contracts and her purpose was very much completed and it was it was completed well. Like not judging what it was that she did. It just looks like it was completed well. And I, I just thought, mm, this is all really interesting because I found myself then feeling, um, you know, that sense of loss for the person and, and what she represented. And then the sense of freedom as well. And it was like, Again, it's like that that piece of walking, the two walks, you know, the one foot in the freedom and the other foot walking away from what controls us. And I, I think watching the royal family and watching the queen and watching everything that it's about did bring up that in abundance. And to be honest, I have to say, you know, they look very privileged. But there was a whole sense of, of watching them and feeling that they were totally trapped, actually, as I watched them. They were all dressed up in beautiful clothes, but were they free? I don't think so. Not really. And no, they're not free. And, and even they're more trapped than, than even we are, to be honest. You know, <laughs> so it's 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 an interesting, it was just an interesting thing it brought up. And as I said, I didn't have enough of time to watch all of it. But but in all of that, you know, and your your comment, Lana, there is what triggered me to, to talk about it, um, about that space that it's providing now and what we can do with that space. And and there's a part of me then that even wonders, does that does that even matter? Does it even matter that Charles will be coming back in and holding the contracts? Because somehow I don't feel held in that at all for some reason. I don't actually. It's like, well, um, yeah. um, go on. If I may say, um, it, when you mention when you're talking about him, I don't feel like he's going to have the same amount mm. of um, power that his mom did. Yeah. Over the people, I feel like he's he's going to fall short of of really um, being recognized by everyone as king. Um, but his mom was recognized as queen yeah. by everyone all over the world. But I have, don't have that feeling that he'll have the same recognition as king. But I want to get back to something you say. Um, when you, you're saying that she, ser she promised like to serve you. And now, is she making the promise to the people or was she making the promise to her masters so i am going well, to that's serve a good question. all my life mm. that's reversing it that's flipping flipping to the other side and the other thing that i um noticed the when um charles was speaking um some there's a word that he kept using in all his speech and when there were um, announcing um, and declaring that he is now king, you know, um, and they were reading off the speech, the word realm keep appearing in every one of the speech that he did. And I was like, that's really peculiar. What are they talking about when they're saying all the realms? Because mm. on earth, we use, you know, regular language. What? Who are they serving when they say I'm going to be serving the realms, all the realms? Now that's, that's really taking interesting. It to, that's taking it to another unseen level for me. At least that's what mm -hmm. I'm seeing. And you know, when you guys watch him, if you do watch him give any speech, you will see that 
that will be one of the lines that will be within the speech every single time. Like serving all the, um, the, the colonies and things like that, and the people that, you know, the different countries that they rule over, they'll include all of that, but then they will say the realms as well. Now, who, who and what um, are they talking about? Serving the realms. Mm. That's a very interesting question, Lana. Having watched uh, five series of Game of Thrones now, that seems to be the way they um, voice themselves when it comes to their, you know, area that they are responsible for or that they are ruling. So, yeah. Yeah, I understand, but the word realm, to me, when I'm listening to him talk about the realms, I am seeing that he's talking about the unseen. There's, a, there's a, 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 an unseen space that we are not privy to as human beings on the surface of Earth, right? There is that next level that they are uh, serving because they're saying that they're serving the people, right? And they're serving the different colonies, but they're also serving the realm, right? They keep saying, I will serve the realm. So that realm to me, when I'm thinking about it, it's like they're serving the masters. Well, it, it's definitely well picked yeah. up. It's, an, it's, it's ambiguous, if that's the word. Absolutely. And like, like, like look at it from, a, from an energetic and then, of course, you know, I, I, I will have to invite ourselves to, to the realm and see how many of our soul shards are working those realms. And this is why, you know, that kind of feeling of completion is maybe felt by many now as those contracts are being released uh, because of our contribution those various realms to the service to um domination and control we talked about this last time you know we always have to take ourselves back we always have shards still working in those holding these realms up so and this is why it is such a good idea now to really call them back yeah, this empty space that we have um, before he's crowned king. Um, and I, I'm not sure I, when that will be, um, but I'm thinking it's around the equinox, fall equinox. So between now and then we have this, this um, time to really you know, dig in and reclaim our sovereignty. And I, I like this, this mm. space right this this quiet almost open space where one thing has ended and the other thing hasn't begun yet and w in my experience one of the things that's going on in, in the unseen is there's all kinds of contracts being renegotiated and that includes energies and beings that were held in contract in this old anchor right and so one of the things that i've been experiencing you know i work with crystals a lot and crystals talk to me and gemstones and crystals call to me and the crown jewels have been talking to me saying wait, wait a minute we're we want to be done we want to be done with this contract Right, these little sentient beings in the in the crown, in the scepter, in the orb, right? I mean, not all not all of the jewels want to be done with it. Some are still on board, but a lot of those jewels within within the crown jewels that have held also an anchor point for those contracts, their contracts are now up for renegotiation. So there's a, this space, this open space being held for that, which is pretty cool, I think. Yeah, because if she's mm -hmm. gone, and she used to hold our contracts for all of us, 
Now those contracts are now dead. They're ended. There's no contract holder. Now, do we want to uh, have our contracts pass on to the new king? I don't think so. I'm not so putting my energetic signature on there or giving my tacit consent or free will away to that. Well, and, and exactly, that's exactly right. Like every one of us has probably done a number of revocations and declared our own sovereignty. So mm -hmm. is it our contracts that are being held or people who haven't declared their sovereignty yet? Well, they'll try to negotiate an, um, a new contract with the new king, right? For everybody, right? But it's up to us now to say, hey, we've learned that we can um, revoke all this. We don't have to allow tacit consent to just naturally engage us again in a contract with the new king. It's like, you know, it's like, for example, when a bank buys over another bank and then they open a brand new account for you with a new account number and so on. And I usually say, hey, wait a minute. I don't have a contract with you, new bank. I had a contract with the old bank. My signature was given to the old bank to hold my um, money there, right? Now you bought it over and you're just gonna assume that I'm giving you consent, that I have a contract with you. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was already, I heard somewhere uh, saying, you know, if, because everything is sworn to, uh, to, to her, if they now have to be sworn specifically to him or if the contracts are being passed on directly. Um, but apart from that, so let's look at that. That's all, that's all very good. So think of now the space and we, we got to take it maybe beyond, you know, the contracts with the new queen, you know, because as soon as there is a space that opens up, everything else keeps coming in. So, you know, it's like, oh, there are some contract holders. They are no longer holding contracts. They are certainly imprinted on holding contracts. So let me come in and throw my interesting proposals forward. And that happens on the unseen as well. So what, I, 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 what we need to look at, revocation, yes, and then invocation. Okay, there's a lot of empty space now. Because frankly, you know, as soon as we have an awareness of what's going on, we're making a choice right now. We're staying sovereign. We're not going to take on any of that uh, new king's uh, blah, blah. That's done. We're done with that. Pretty much done as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now it's going to get interesting. Okay. So are we going to stay floaty like this? Do we have to engage with something, someone else? And who will that be? How are we going to fortify our new reality with having that space created. Well, and maybe we just go back to our direct connection, right? Our contracts with Mother Earth. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's how what we, we have to do. And con contracts with Mother Earth. And remember, we are being multidimensional beings now. Mm. Because we have a contract with Mother Earth, and that is pretty much what holds us grounded here that's how we bring all that life force in but who else do we have contracts with because earth's mind is connected to the cosmic mind mm -hmm. and we are tapping into the cosmic mind through our minds so what what else is there solar cosmic um galactic universal so all of that, we've opened ourselves up now to start thinking a bit more international, oh, international, yeah, international, why not? Mm -hmm. Multidimensional, you know, mm -hmm. on that sort of, uh, so there's a huge space that opened up for having let go out of those contractual obligations. Hi, Sean. Hello, guys, yeah. just tuning in. We're just, we're just talking about, uh, you know, having 
releasing ourselves from our contractual obligations with the sovereign, with the um, with the the monarchy, and uh, looking for new liaisons. Liaisons. Sounds like a good timing. Who do we want to? <laughs> who do we want to? Uh, you know, sovereignly connect with. Absolutely. Who? Who or what? Yeah. Well, this again, you know, this is this is this is that bit where you know, um, outside matter matters because this is where those connections probably start. As we are talking about now, coming into autumn, uh, planting new seeds. These are the new seeds that we are planting in that pause that Mary was was mentioning, because we are in this pause at the moment. So what kind you of know, since since she was the holder of all the contracts and now all those contracts with Indian, I'm thinking about how many subcontracts were attached to all those contracts that would also not be a contract anymore. That could be we could be dissolve all those as well and i was thinking too we were all saying that charles doesn't really have the same potency that elizabeth did and when you look at like generational transition i mean just in the workplace the new generation doesn't have the drive to move the old forward and I don't know that he would really even have the inspiration. I mean, he might have the fear, but he wouldn't have the inspiration to really continue to pick up those contracts and hold them in the same way that she did. So who else is going to pick them up? And how do we use this time to direct them in the way that we want or completely cancel them? I don't feel like it will happen. Yeah, I, I kind of see like them being like, fractioned apart to little yeah. little bits here and there and slowly breaking apart and dissolving mm -hmm. yeah so let's just think yeah. about this. sorry who, who wants to say something no i was just going to say that there's a sense as well for me that what sean was just saying there about them being fractured apart and dissolving there is a, a sense that somehow that the monarchy it, that what's there's something about it that's going to become more transparent um, as to what's behind it. And we'll never really know that. But I just feel that in her passing, because she's been there for so long, you know, she, she's been on the throne for 70 years. So she was there when we were all born. And it was established a very long time ago before we, we came here, kind of. And it, it feels like, in Charles stepping into to that role now. There's something about it that's really transparent and doesn't have the same sense of um, power behind it or maybe secrecy, even though I do know there's still secrecy because we don't really know about what's behind them. There's just, just something about that for me, that, that, um, that there's something more transparent or will become more transparent in it. Like I think Harry has already started the journey of that, of voicing certain experiences that he has had. And, and I just, I don't know how it's going to unfold, but it's just a sense that I have and a feeling. I have, I have absolutely no doubt that this guy will outcreate it outcreate this whole thing. You're not wanting to carry on the way, you know, he's not an idiot. I don't think, yeah. that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's the, the, the interesting thing for me would be, um, you know, following the little breadcrumbs, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we've been asked to create a new galaxy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're having all these uh, souls coming into the North Pole, you know, where we've had, we've got our embassy, when we look into the hollow earth, everything is changing, huge faction change and everything. So, the question now for us is, or for me at least, is, you know, he can do whatever he wants. That's fine. I want to know how, what is my role in this now as a, as a mediator between worlds, which we all are here, and, and who are we going to bring in 
in order to support whatever needs to be supported. Yeah, so go ahead, Sean. Oh, okay. Well, like I, I see already with all the fractionism a little bit, like there's already been like articles like who owns the queen's jewels and all this stolen from India back when. And it's like, it's two, like two days after she died. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tuesday, two days after she died, like all these different things that weren't able to be talked about started getting talked about. And like, you know, there's going to be fighting and feuding about them. And like, for me as like a celestial medium, just to tone them down a little bit, make sure they don't get too hyped up or <clears throat> too emotional and just, just try to stay calm while all this new stuff keeps coming out. Because like new stuff is going to keep coming out and coming out and just not taking this new stuff and just going down a bad trail. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not, <laughs> not able to talk too well right now. Well, like, in, like I was talking about before you got on the jewels, you know, some of them want to be free. Some of them don't want to have those contracts and that programming held on to them anymore. So maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I just I just kind of saw as I was working on them and meditating with them, some of them will just kind of like pop out of their settings <laughs> and <laughs> fall on the floor. So like, yeah, and like small groups of zealots like popping up, like we want our jewels back. And mm -hmm. like, just knowing like, that's not my fight. Like the jewels are gonna liberate themselves. But I'm not gonna hop on any of the new fights because this is gonna open up a hundred tiny little heads everywhere. And you know what? So be it. We'll just ride. Like, I just plan on riding the wave and having a good time doing it. Well, so I that, watching the circus show. <laughs> I believe that one jewel on the top of the crown, that diamond, belongs to India. It was taken from India. And I think the Indians, they want their jewel back mm -hmm. because it was kind of like, you know, stolen from them. It may have belonged to another um, Raja in India. Um, <laughs> and, you know, when they pillaged that place, they took it. So what the programs are put into that jewel is would be interesting to, um, to find out about. And if that diamond wants to go back to India is a question. We started out talking about how we all have a sense of something dismantling this week, and we were talking about it in different concepts. So I think that we're, we're honing in and we're seeing that happening now as it's transitioned to Charles, but I still hear like they're cold, dead hands. And so I still think there's going to be that attempt for something to come in and take over behind it. And that comes back to where Lana was talking about, that the contract revocations. I know I got compelled to do carrot and stick with the fire the other day. Um, I think that is neutralizing and buffering around some of that attempt to hold on to the old, even though the old isn't going to be carried forward. Well, well, I mean, for my for myself, you know, I have lineage in Ireland and Scotland and England and Northern, you know, Northern Europe and Scandinavia. And I can feel the deconstruction in my DNA code. You know, all of a sudden that like, kind of almost like unraveling or unrippling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been feeling like a spiral. That's not a double helix, like it's completely separate, one going up and one going down. And that is the dismantling. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I have that same sensation. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, Jen, that you said uh, the, the phrase cold at hands, because that is something that Andrew's been telling us for a while now, that the ones that are still here, that's the only way we're going to free ourselves is to take power out of the cold at hands. Now, I was listening to someone who did... Um, just a, a day or two after uh, a live show um, where they uh, created the spiritual court of equity and brought the royal family in and the earth mother. Um, and they were talking about, you know, um, the different things that was going on um, and trying to resolve um, 
the karma, universal karma and some of the contracts, stuff like that. But one of the things that uh, was discussed there was they asked um, the queen um, if she wanted to be done with this and free herself. And her answer was no, she wanted to continue in the same way. So it looks to me, even though she has passed on, she has made a choice to continue in the same old ways, that she does not want to be free from being the puppet that she you know, was all these years of ruling. So this will be interesting to find out what's going on in the unseen realm. Why is she making that choice? Is she still under control, under their control? Or is it a, a free will choice that she's making? To me, a lot of these comes on the bigger scale, back down to the whole mystery school teachings and trying to be like the first race of Earth and install their mystery school teachings that were going to be at the end time. So like there's less groups battling it out now, but... You know, the earth asked them to make these mystery schools to battle it out for the end. And some just want to battle it out to the end. And I think there's kind of like, there has to be a battle at the end just so people can walk away from it. Like, it's just, you know, it's just going to keep going on and going on. Like they're here to teach us, in, in my opinion, like the mystery schools teach us that we don't, eventually they teach us that we don't need them. And we got to make our own school, make our own signature frequency and understanding of everything. But like, like with the queen, like, you know, these, these people have been doing these as their purpose for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lifetimes. They don't want to quit now. They like, you know, that's their purpose. And it's like this forgiveness that we got to have that, uh, yeah, so, so what? You want to be part of the domination and control that Earth asked for like okay okay they'll let you do it i don't care you guys just keep doing your thing but it's like it's crazy the big scales that it's been brought in at well you know it's interesting andrew just recently said that um no matter what the the front man does here now there's there's the force in the background that's making all the decisions anyway so that's why i'm thinking does she really want to be free or like you're saying sean um that they've been doing it for such a long time that why give up now you know in order for us to be free we have to take power out of their cold dead hands mm -hmm. because it might like it might see it like they're doing it for us even though it feels completely counteractive to what it is but without that oppression human beings are naturally really really lazy and don't want to change and don't want to do anything. And this is the thing that's just kind of like the catalyst. Like, okay, we can seize our moment now. Now's the time we, we got here to this finishing end timeline. And now we can wake up because we're not we're not gonna agree to this bull crap any longer, whatsoever, period zero. But oppression can also make you want to be lazy and not do anything because you've been so oppressed, like why the hell do anything? You're not gonna get anyway, anyways. So <laughs> that's another way mm -hmm. to look at that. Mm -hmm. But that's the teaching too. It's like, but then you, you can't give up. Like if you give up, you just throw the towel in. Okay. Yeah. It's like, then you don't win. But even though not the mystery... to be fighting, but it's just to, to feel that calm and serenity. Well, anything that could be going on, just be a walk through the eye of the storm with, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, and maybe this space that we're in right now is the opportunity for us to take the horses out of their cavalry. Yeah, they're stepping out. And then there's that knowing too, because this is happening, but also the knowingness that everything's changing right now too. Like you can just feel it, it's exciting. And we don't have to do a hard road anymore because we're such masters that we can just have fun while we're doing all this stuff. Tanya, it's interesting you say you talk about the horse because I'm thinking now. I wonder if that's why AB uh, republished the uh, the horse revocation. Well, I think it was due to a conversation that 
he had on one of the Friday comedy shows that I was a witness to that caused okay. him to kind of revisit some of the work that he'd done and rethink yeah, but about he, some of the work he'd previously done. But I mean, he, that's just my perspective. I mean, it's, it's a good time to um, do the uh, horse revocation again as well to help free up the horses because I mean, they don't have a voice. We are their voices. And I'm sure that if we were soldiers um, riding those horses many eons ago in wars and stuff like that, we're all attached to them, or we could have been one of the horses. Like I was thinking just the other day, and I was sharing this with a, with a cousin of mine, and I was saying to him, you know, I've never had any back injuries um, that I'm aware of at all, but I know that I started suffering from back pain from a very young age. And I'm thinking to myself, it comes on and it goes off. Sometimes I'm perfectly fine. And sometimes, it, you know, I feel the pain. And I'm thinking to myself, well, wait a minute. Could it be that I was a horse in some lifetime and I got abused? Um, and that's why I suffer from this pain on and off, you know. Um, so, you know, this could have been the case because, as I said, I don't remember ever injuring myself to have pain, you know, lower back pain. It's funny that you talk about back pain. Like I, I haven't really had back pain throughout my life and I threw my back out the other day and noticed that some of this deconstruction was, you know, it's like some of my family crest and lineage were breeder families, right? Mm. And so where, where is that? Where, where is that hurting me? Right, right in the, right in the back, the sacral chakra. So I feel that deconstruction in the DNA, but also the, the physical body. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Part of the transmutation of all that karma. Mm -hmm. It's like, we've all, we've all definitely, it's like, maybe not breeder family, but we'd all definitely pass karma in some past lifetime into the horse for like lifetime through lifetimes. And just eventually all that karma has got to come back, even though we're getting rid of karma. But um, yeah, and like things somatically manifest in the body just mm -hmm. to transform it all. Absolutely. So maybe you're also those crystals that been talking to you you know those royal crystals you know maybe they have quite a bit of horse um horse energy encapsulated in it that needs to be released that you could do because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah it, when they're reaching out to you i would i would assume it's whatever is imprisoned as a memory in those crystals that wants to be released the programming they want to be cleared and cleaned of the old programming. Yeah. And the programming of who or what? So, yeah. Yeah. Anything that, from my understanding, anything that's not within dominion of Mother Earth. It's like they want to go back to that clean and clear space now where they can choose when they have a choice instead of just being picked up and taken and, and used okay yeah not be slaves anymore the horse and not just just not just like a lifetime of slavery just taking the karmic debt from multiple lifetimes and just being pounded into them without their choice <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. they're, they're done with that yeah. Layers and layers, many layers, many layers of this onion. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's so good time because there's there's so much like horse oppression in these royal family lineage lines and everything. And so they're getting all some breathing room right now too. So how is the archetypal structure going to change now? We were talking about... Um, species um what's the what's the word i've written it down 
species battle battle between species new species that are wanting to come in that have now been you know the space that has been created and stuff like that um because you know the the archetypes that we're working with are imprinted in the cosmic mind in the conscious in the cosmic uh, collective consciousness and whilst we are not necessarily perceiving them in matter they still impacting us the impacting our you know perception our imagination our our thoughts and feelings and all of that so can we see any changes in in the archetypes as we're moving into this new era well we're still in the chocolate souffle mode so <laughs> we can't interfere with the chocolate souffle right now <laughs> punch a hole in it it seems to me that the earth mother as she moves in to this new phase of of energy that's maybe the 5d crystalline blueprint that the same structures can't hold in place that the structural archetypes are are different now yes that's what i'm seeing as well there's an expansion to it she is i wouldn't say forced but she is opening up to a different collective well and and maybe you know this is probably part of the prime creators audit that happened you know back in 2014 i think ab said 2013 but 2013 mm -hmm. so you know one of the things that you're just talking about renegotiating contracts one of the things that happened when i was traveling to oahu the gathering place was i was sort of like working at as security my higher galactic self <laughs> held, holding the clipboard saying okay who's allowed who's allowed in to this gathering and on the full moon on the new moon there was a galactic gathering where where some galactic bigwigs were coming in and so it was like i was boots on the ground sort of holding this this portal this security portal and uh, working with my higher dimensional galactic selves to hold that security space and, i mean i wasn't in the council meeting but i was at the you know i was like holding the space at the door but a lot of galactic big wigs and then a lot of a lot of like earth energy entities the unicorns and the fairies and the dragons and the manahunis and you know there was a big sort of meeting about okay what is this going to look like because it's not set yet it's not set yet you know this is something new that we're creating these new structures i think and that that again is an invitation for us to not forget to look at the unseen, especially at this moment in time, because this big renegotiation of contracts and what we were just saying, you know, and we, we focused it on to the monarchy and, you know, everything that's happening, it's happening on all different realms. And we have this opportunity to re negotiate our contracts and we know how to do this because lots of us have done a plethora of, of karmic resolution now and it's now as so no, now what so it's now time to use the fetus in a womb process you know go back there and and start renegotiating the contracts in the light of the new era that we are part of bringing in mm -hmm placeholders or be that now peacekeepers or you know portal holders or anything whatever we want to be and really stepping into that space of being those world mediators we've always been mediums we are we've been you know sent uh what's what's the word celestial mediums forever once we heard what it was like okay we're not been doing this forever right 
So this is not something we need to learn. It's already the next step. And yes, celebration of the old step. Yes, I have to remind myself, but it's already the next step. So let's start negotiating that contract of world, worlds or realms. I like that. I watched that Games of Thrones, but it works, you know, on so many levels, you know? And maybe this is the time to say, I do not consent. Right? I do not consent to these old ways anymore. I, you know, I'm only consenting to what is in alignment with, for the evolution of Earth Mother, right? And, and that's me, right? That's my, my level of consent. But um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is, we're in this in-between space where we can say, no, I'm not choosing that this time. We've been there and done that. I was born into that. I don't need to re-up that contract. So, so, so which, uh, uh, is it the carrot and stick where we do separation of density, 900, 900 uh, degrees? It's, it's time to expand that. Separation of density, like, uh, I don't know, a couple of million degrees all the way. I think he said 27,000 degrees of separation. Fantastic. Double it. <laughs> well, there's nothing to lose, right? Let's double it. Because it goes that fast now. Things happen that quickly. It's well, like it's kind of like exposing exposing um, the system that that degrees of separation from us so that the whole universe can see the truth of what's going on here, you know, and they're not just hearing it by the way or at a later date, but they can realize that, hell, what's going on on earth right now, it doesn't look really good, you know. Well, and um, maybe there's an invitation, right? Instead of Oz saying, don't look at that man behind the curtain, that curtain's already ripped back. So maybe we just invite the man behind the curtain out to play and, you know, collaborate in an equal way instead of having to be, you know, at the top of the pyramid. Signaling our readiness. And at the same time, what we're doing is we're acknowledging our own signature frequency makeup. That goes beyond Pleiadian, Neptunian, la la la, you know, because that battle of um, species, <clears throat> there is a battle. There's a battle energy at this stage. So, we've got to be. This is where we have to step back into our mediator space and stay out of judgment and all of that, on on a very um, intangible. Wrong. and this will how will that okay so let's let's uh, ground this in here how will that happen because there's a lot of blah blah on, on on that side what does it mean it will happen that we get triggered maybe more than we have been triggered before right <laughs> and we've seen it all or well, some of us at least i have certainly and um the next level of mastery the invitation for the next level of mastery. What does that look like? It's got the multidimensional element in it, and we've been working towards that. Yeah, because for as many people who start freaking out as things change, there's going to be an equal amount of people who are ready to help, be at the helm just to help those people out, like in a constant balance. Kind of see that happening. So what kind of help are we talking about? Let's let's earth it back into the into the into this reality. What kind of help can we expect without expecting it? Well, we'll just you know like conspiracy theories. You know, like we've been in this road for so long, we've gotten ourselves into all sorts of dark corners through our own conquest of understanding, and just someone beside you will bring up and they'll be panicky and they'll be paranoid and they'll be talking about this and that and you'll be like yeah yeah and you, you can talk about it with them without going into their realm of paranoia or freak show 
because then they'll just be able to move on to the next thing and the next thing because it's this pyramid of the self just constantly growing and as soon as you learn one thing you're on to the next thing and the next thing and we're, we're still learning new things but we can help anyone who's on those other things to just not be freaked out or not go into trails to nowhere really because we know how easy that is to happen you get a little too emotional to some subject matter and starts to dominate you in some way or form so we're going to be working it on the mental realms we're going to be working it on the physical realms because you know we might have stuff will be brought up physically which is happening already out of the blue it's like whoa what's this now keeping the bigger context whilst not negating conventional means of, uh, of healing and allopathic and everything just really starting to look Maintaining that big picture, emotional, as you said, Sean, of course, yeah, that. And yeah, because like, because when we maintain that picture, you know, the totality of what we want the universe, multiverse to be, and we don't even have to talk about it with people, because one, they're not ready for it. It's not part of their belief system or their world. But if we just talk to them as nice human beings, we like through our light, like our bio photons, our our transmissions, our solar plexus, what gets shared in our blood, that just naturally transmits to Joe or Steve or Diane or whoever we're talking with. Even if we're just having a cup of coffee or say hi at the street, we can just, you know, stay in our own signature frequency and the totality of the universal things just get, you know, the little trickle down effect start changing the world yeah. stepping up the hygiene to oh, cosmic, yeah. level, cosmic level hygiene well and i think too you know reminding the people in our lives who are still caught in that caught in that cycle and and spinning out right with fear or or distraction to come back to center right to come back to the breath to come back to the body to come back to that groundedness and just be present right just being present with self for a minute reminds us what the path and purpose is because your path is not my path or your path or your path or your path right we're all even though we're walking together right on this journey we're still walking our own path but there's also something coming in uh, that's been refined in my world at the moment. You know, we often talk about awareness and matching our level of allowance to the level of the, our awareness. And what's really popping in big time is, I wouldn't say advanced, but a more fortified level of choice on that. You know, because we often think, okay, level of awareness and, and, and allowance, okay, I'm good. I can be in allowance and everything. And then we forget about choosing. And it's no longer good enough to just balance allowance with uh, awareness because it, it keeps us stuck still in that. I mean, that's just what I've started perceiving, you know, which, which got really icky and like, hey, I, I've been so good with allowance. What's going on? There's nothing really, you know, that I should feel like that, you know. I'm perfectly aware what's going on I'm perfectly okay why am I feeling icky and it was that hey step up the choice mm. when you think of allowance when you think of awareness just look where choice is left out because yeah I know you're a master of allowance because you know we've done a lot of work but that doesn't justify you not choosing So shall we, uh, shall we pick a card? Sure. Caroline Mice. Has any, anyone got that? Archetype cards. These are all the archetype cards that are available at this stage. And we're just going to pick a card that just gives us some sort of 
maybe summarizes where we or you know works along the lines what we were talking about today yeah should we do that so just use yeah. a moment while i'm doing my masterful shuffling here just throw in your own little uh, you know intention and then let's see what we're going to choose and then we're going to look at that card so maybe let's say let's choose an archetype that we could actually work with over the next couple of weeks or at least this week until next show and see how in support in contribution to what the collective and we're all on an individual level sort of going through should we do that oh it fell out that's the one <laughs> thank you thank you it's good when you can't shuffle you know easy shape shifter <laughs> The shapeshifters are back. I have to say, that you was my that was my archetype for the last thirteen days. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. So let's let me read for you what we've got. So we got the light attributes of the shapeshifter, a skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness. No shit, right? <laughs> Ability to see the potential in everything. Mm. What a beautiful summary of our show today, hey? Mm -hmm. Shadow. Projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment. So the invitation, long time agenda, really. It's that pause, putting the seeds in, long time agenda, right? Okay, well, let me see what the shapeshifter says in the bookie. How funny you got it too, hey? Yeah, I've been working with that for the last, you know, 13 days. I do a draw of a number of different decks um, on the magnetic day, which is a uh, galactic calendar, tone one, divine feminine. Cool. See. And we have been talking about the shapeshifter before, remember? Not from a place of uh, shifting ourselves into a horse perspective or something like that, but being able to really, you know, move through the different levels of consciousness at, at will. So the shapeshift is a spellcaster. Ooh. Has the ability to change appearances and navigate through different levels of waking consciousness, dream states, and the astral plane. The shadow shapeshifter exhibits instability, fickleness, and lack of conviction, like politicians who reinvent themselves to appeal to the latest popular trends. Look for a lifetime pattern of flexibility, changeability, or deceptiveness, especially tied to your work or family life. Well, thank you very much, Caroline. The the um, the archetypes deck that I have is um, is this one. We this just is uh, Kim is Cran. So I so the shapeshifter is the trick the trickster, the elusive, the formless. The shapeshifter has the love of theater, games, and trickery, and its energy appears as the one thing, only to reveal the more complex story below the surface. Right. It's within all of us to some degree, and it's the side of ourselves that's slippery, noncommittal, experimental, and longs to dismiss the rules. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the energy to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of our existence. And uh, the ultimate shape shifter works undercover in service of the greater good the diminished shapeshifter becomes the people pleaser. We are all undercover agents, aren't we? Mm -hmm. But for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Double O awesome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the light side is the vibrant, adaptive, humorous side. And what, the dark side, the shadow side is the charlatan, the people pleaser, or the trickery. 
people please i think we we've gone beyond that right we can distance ourselves from that amen amen yes <laughs> working beneath the surface rippling waves of change yeah oh it's an exciting time definitely an exciting time and in this space of of breath you know to be able to shift perspectives and and anchor you know what what we need to for the greatest good i mean we I always have that opportunity i think i just want to add is anyone felt a feeling similar to this because this is what's been happening with me for the last uh, few days, maybe a couple of weeks. It feels like all my memories, like from places that I've been and lived and different thoughts, like everything's coming to the surface right now. And, and kind of like in a barragement format, like it's like <laughs> all these, it's like the pond has been shooken up, the silt's all everywhere. And before it settles, I have to just sort like what I want, what I want to keep, like, where is this old thought coming from? Why are these old thoughts here? I thought I got rid of those and just kind of like replace, kind of redefine the boundaries and reality kind of thing. Mm. So it feels like it's been happening lately. This huge said, like sorting process. I said that yesterday talking to somebody that like, I feel like the last 15, 20 years are up for review right now. And going through it and every day that I've pulled out of my garage this week, the thought I've had is what programs are still running me and like trying to break those down. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, like in, like in the way I see things always through Chinese medicine, it's like these things get hidden in a fluid, a yin medium. So like bones, fat, like blood, blood's the one that's always moving. So it's more apparent, but like the deeper ones. And it's like, they're all ones that I've stored for so long are coming up. They're entering the blood, they're entering circulation. So I can finally get rid of them because they're, they're just so taxing on the body and you don't even know it, these subconscious ideas and thoughts barraging our psyche and our, our programs. Like, because programs are our friends. They're like, if we're programmed well, we can go off venturing and dreaming in other worlds and realms and, you know, we'll still do exactly what I want. <laughs> like, you know? But like some of the negative ones, they just get negative things accomplished and just getting rid of them, mm -hmm. sorting through them all, definitely coming to the surface. More than well, Lionsgate, different, different than Lionsgate. One, one of the things that I've noticed when I'm working on people is the skeletal system has been really like overloaded, right? It's like, instead of allowing the opening to earth where all this information that's been stacked up and stacked up and stacked up over the course of one's life can now be released and stored in the Akashic record. So the new information can come in. So there's a lot of that, I think, need for releasing of those old, I, I don't know, thoughts and behaviors and, and, and programs and directives. Now mm, there's like a changeover that's happening and that we're Heck making yeah. room for. We have to make room for it. Yeah, you've you definitely been giving that opportunity. Like, do you want to keep that or not? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> I, th I think it's what, what I'm seeing. Did, did you say, Sean, sorry, I had, I had to take that call. So are you saying that there is more programming coming through? Did, did it's you like, that? things from deep layers of my life mm -hmm. that I've buried are just all coming up to the surface, mm -hmm. like into my, like the mental chatter, the mind chatter. It's like these thoughts are from five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, different little instances. And they're just coming into my awareness. And it's just like, where are these coming from? And so now it's like a chance to get rid of them. But it's like, whoa, these are weird thoughts. like. How is this even in my conscious thinking? Because it's just so ass backwards. It's from a different time. That's not part of, or that's not going to be a part of myself now. 
So it's like this opportunity to bifurcate it, this opportunity to separate thin from thick, pure from impure. But it's like this mental barragement at times. It's like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a lot of that. I have had that as well. Yeah, especially I blamed it on, on full moon, like, like Jane said, but there's something else going on other than, <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I have, it, I have it literally in my dream time that I dream about people from the past, which I never do. My dreams are very unusual normally, and they're popping in. And it's almost like, okay, this is resolution time. And Emma was saying to me, uh, my daughter, she said, oh, mama, what is it? There's all these people phoning me. They used to go to school with me and this and that. And I said, okay, well, that's it. You're playing it out in, the, in this reality. I, I deal with it in dream time. Um, and, and then what I was also, what I'm starting to more and more look into is, you know, from a program perspective, you know, remember we always saying how much of that is actually yours. And then the link to all of that, we really got to acknowledge that from a mental perspective, there's nothing wrong with our mind. Yeah, we've been really mind bashing for a long time. But the mind allows us to, to tap into the cosmic mind. And I think what's been happening over, obviously, everything that we've been talking about is a bit like when you think you're going into a house and it hasn't been dusted for some time. <laughs> I know exactly what that looks like. So you go up and it's done <laughs> dusting and all of a sudden there's all the dust particles like flying all over the place. I'm like, fucking hell. And this is almost like as we are tapping using our mind, you know, that is not necessarily uh, local in nature as far as I'm concerned tapping into that cosmic mind and picking up those particles. And as we know, everything is in the quantum field. Nothing ever, it doesn't matter how much you've cleared it, it's still there. It's still available in the field. So with all this shit getting thrown up, there's all these bits and pieces that have still a slight resonance, you know, like, oh, okay. And then you pick it up. But as you say, it's like, okay, acknowledge. Okay, that's all shit. Thank you. Done. One little clearing, chuck out chuck 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 but that's part of i think the advanced uh, mastery that uh, you know i can see we have to step into it's not when i say advanced it's not that we're going to have to use you know different tools the tools are the same maybe the perception of our multi-dimensional setup is expanding slightly so for me for instance you know i've never really looked into the mind much and the mind connecting to the cosmic mind, but from the stuff that I've been reading of late, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, you know, it also uh, acknowledges my need for having stuff logically um, analyzed. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with the mind, but lots of people just look at the mind and the brain and the ego in one little big bag and then say, oh, fr throw it out. No, 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 no. You're not throwing any of it out, you know. The, the, you need the brain to, to, to be the interface between the minds. You need the mind because that's been with you and your soul journey forever. So, you know, all the networks that have been created and all the little sort of uh, avenues, you need that. And then the ego, well, yeah, we need the ego too. So that kind of thing. Yes, but I have seen that as well. Hmm. And so it's linking in my mind now, and I've been using a lot of like new massage tools, like high vibration, like one's like 400 or 4,000 a minute. The other one's 10,000 a minute. And I've been using these nonstop. And I, I think the vibrational, like even at times when I started using them, I was starting to get lymph, lymph swellings, like in my armpits and stuff. And I think it's like straight up vibrating all these things out into the surface again. To deal with so yeah and and i like that what you're saying because i've been looking into the vibrations the brain wave frequencies connecting to the earth's crust as we all know the human resonance and i'm like okay well there's the human resonance what about the other what about the other levels right what about the shell of the earth and and there's obviously this correlation between our brain waves depending on our mental states of awareness that go into the right into the inner core you know gamma waves for instance gamma brain waves go straight into the the inner core which is 40 hertz yeah 
Mm. And then you got the inner inner core that is 80 hertz. And that's pretty much dealt with the earth. And I'm thinking, well, what about this 542 hertz, right? Or whatever that is for the heart. Where's that going? And this is, this is really for me now, and I'm looking at this and well, that's going beyond the earth. That's connecting into the cosmic mind. That's connecting into all of that. So we can no longer just say, you know, and, and, and this is now, is it mental masturbation? Well, for me, it's not because I need to understand that because I never looked at that because now it's starting to make much more sense. Yeah, we're past that for the most part. Like just, just going on the mind trails to nowhere and just knowing when you're actually learning, learning stuff. And with your karma and your dreams and like resolving karma, like I, I definitely have a lot of people from the past, but in just a year and a half, just new things have been popping in, like creatures mm -hmm. and dragons and fish with horns. Oh, like, wow. just, yeah, I know, like just different, like a few times fishing and it's like, you know, this big fish and it's got a big unicorn on it or like, a unicorn horn i mean i think that's a new archetype fish with horns yeah fish with horns tons of fish with horns but it's like it's really cool and then i had this like shadowy figure maybe like two and a half feet tall and he was kind of like like if you can think of liquid light think of liquid darkness he was this opposite and he was holding on as like fuck never dreamt of that before and it's kind of cool, like you're saying with um, the 528 going further out into the universe, because it's like so much of my karma has been on people past Earth resolution. But now that that's going away, can kind of get out there. Like I had sent it Centaur a couple of times. Like, ooh, yeah, kind of yeah. cool. I want to dream of this stuff. Absolutely. And, and I think we've gone, well, beyond curiosity learning on that, because this is not something where I'm going, I sit down consciously and seek out that information. It's literally being presented to me. One, one uh, breadcrumb, you know, one newsletter that I sign up on uh, allows me to, you know, do my horoscope from the horoscope, all of a sudden I'm being recommended a book, I look at that book. Next thing is there's an email coming in confirming exactly that. You know, it's like there is a guidance there. And mm -hmm. I am a big fan of that. And there's one thing I've, I'm seeing as well a lot where people looking at divine guidance from a slightly misinterpreted perspective. Because it's like, um, I'm waiting for a sign. I'm waiting for spirit to tell me what to do. And it's like, when have you been indoctrinated to follow orders? This is not what this is all about. You have to make an order, a demand on yourself and then ask for contribution. Allow the quantum entanglements to set themselves up in a way to send you those little breadcrumbs and those little signs and bits and pieces. But we gotta stop for anyone out there who's still waiting for spirit to tell them or for an angel or, you know, or a reptilian, whatever they wanna work with to tell them what to do, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Well, and that's the no, you know, that's the knowingness and paying attention to the signs, right? The signs are always coming. That's so whether we're we're like aware and and cognizant. Oh, oh, wait a minute! I need to follow that that breadcrumb, right? And going back to that place of of knowingness, right? Within within us, absolutely, that we can follow that. Yeah, the signs are often very much material signs literally you know a newsletter a word somewhere in a on facebook that's why i love facebook i mean i don't care about you know friendships holding up and all that sorry of course i love you all guys <laughs> but you know what I mean? it's like the inspiration is being able to communicate with people that i want to communicate i've never even looked at i don't even half of the people or the half the, the majority of the people have no idea who they are on facebook um, I had a moment yesterday where I was thinking about changing my mind on a decision that I was um, 
is shaking up my life right now. Like I've, I had just thought, bad idea. I'm not going to do it. I'm stay where I am. And I literally got stung on the ass by a wasp, like within three minutes <laughs> of having that, that thought. And I looked it up when I got home and the message is change is painful. Proceed forward. So. <laughs> Mystery schools and the wasps. Okay. So like the bees. So the when, universe is an asshole, but thank you. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when that comes in, that message, change is painful. That's very much against any if in any universal law. That's a little trickster shapeshifter telling you some shit. So no, when that stuff comes in in a concluded form like this, do never accept conclusions. Destroy and uncreate it, and ask again what what do you really mean. Mm-hmm. Nothing that I can actually appreciate because as soon as that comes in, it's no. That's not a universal sign. That's usually a misinterpretation. Because change doesn't have to be painful. Well, I'm paraphrasing. The way it was presented made perfect alignment with where I was yesterday. And it wasn't even a full-on thing. It was like a warning. But yeah, I hear you. Okay. Well, as long as you took out of whatever you needed to, absolutely. I I love, like, we've been reading the mystery schools things again. And the mystery schools and just when he t- starts talking about the bees and the wasps as inoculations from earth mother mm-hmm. and like at different levels of disunity within yourself. Now that it's like, I like. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like, and the, the wasps more like the, the, the warrior archetype. It's more the more violent one, you know, bees are the more gentle one, but it's kind of like when persons is completely in disunity, they get stung and it kind of just, brings you to the new level of where you're at so getting stuck is awesome i love but, it but you, <laughs> you get a big red ass <laughs> it honestly it 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 swelled up and i went back down like pretty fast because i did a two-mile hike after that and i thought i don't know that i should have done something that like sped up my heart rate after getting that but well it's too late now and it, it went down fast it really wasn't that bad did you sit on it or did it just go for you it was, um, I was at my dad's sailboat and like, I didn't notice that there's a wasp nest and like the, the, I forget what they're called, but the main sail over. And it started to like chase after my dog. So like I scooped my dog out up, like up from the bow area and I brought him down below where I was. And uh, it, as soon as I like turned around and put Bango down, like it just got me on my backside and I thought, you fuck. And, it's, funny. <laughs> it's funny you were going after your dog, like you were going to stop him. From the wasps. I did. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd rather take it than my dog. So it's just an interesting answer right away. But yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and no, I, I get swollen more and more. I haven't got stung in maybe a year and a half or two now. Maybe a year. But like, yeah, it's more and more swollen each time, it seems like. And to me, I that's think- just like, it's good. It's like that bigger change that you know that inoculation from earth to to break things up (laughs) what a bunch of bullshit (laughs) i love it make it up and make it up and And make it part of your belief system (laughs) i love it i'm just tongue-in-cheek of course yeah it's great sean Sean, you're blaming art for what for being Uh, strong come on (laughs) no no i'm thanking earth no, of course. It backwards. And this is <laughs> reframing that is required. <laughs> I think it's, it's great. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, try to like find those limitless possibilities again. <laughs> but really, time for a, your medicine. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, they used to do that. But like, there, there's no, there's, nothing's random. Everything happens for a reason we know. I think it must have been a soul shop. Trying to get your attention. There's two soul shards. <laughs> so talk to me. Don't ignore me. I'm gonna sting you in your ass. <laughs> oh, fabulous! Yeah. Oh, okay. What if it was ancient karma being worked out? The bee had one in for you, or the wasp had one in for you, for 
like two million years ago. <laughs> then I waited a long time for not that much result, but yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, my friends, a lot of aha moments, a lot of good stuff as usual. So what was our question? I think we did cover it. Anything that isn't matter, does it, doesn't matter? Is that true or false? I think we've very much argued, put our points of views forward that that is not the case right indeed 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 yeah. okay. lots going on lots of levels oh, lots of levels let's keep our ears noses mouths anything beyond the sensory that we have been working with so far especially the dream world see what's going on in the dream world and we'll take it from there thank you any, any more closing words? Anyone? No? Good. Game of Thrones, guys. Game of Thrones. I just started. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. All right, All right. guys. Hey, I put the recording on as soon as I can. Yeah? Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye. Anna, Anna, put us the, 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 the what's the crest one? The revocation. The revocation. Yeah, that'd be great. The banking one. And if I find another one with the family crest, I'll look around. Yes. I come up with something. Okay. okay. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.